All right, one last video for binomial probability. Now, the reason for this one is because this is the homework problem that students generally have a hard time on, uh, at least last year they did. So this is what I would like to do for my last binomial probability problem today. So Martina beats Selena in two games out of three at tennis. All right, so let's go ahead and just write down some information right away. So the probability that Martina will win, so I'm just going to put probability of Martina is two out of three, which means the probability of Jelena winning is, of course, then one out of three. Okay, what is the probability that Jelena wins a set of tennis six games to four? Now, for those that don't know about tennis, when you play a specific set, you play until you win a certain number of games. When you get to that number of wins, it's over. The game, the set is over. Either the match is over or you progress on to the next set. So as soon as you get to that score, it finishes. Um, now, of course, there are things with, you know, you have to win by two and such things like that, but we're not going to worry about that today. Uh, that will not be important in this problem because obviously six to four means that she won by two. All right, so now we need to look at the probability that Jelena wins a set of tennis six games to four. Now, the common mistake is that people say, okay, this is easy. There's 10 games, so I'm going to use a cumulative, uh, not a cumulative, sorry, a uh, binome PDF. And you're going to say, okay, in order to win six games, that means there are 10 games. The probability of her winning is one out of three, and I want her to win six games. Okay, now on the surface, yes, that looks wonderful. And yes, if you do this, she will win six games. But the problem is this considers something that, that is an issue with what I talked about with, the, with tennis. If she won the first six games, they wouldn't play anymore, right? They would play the first six games, she wins the first six games, done. And so it wouldn't be six games to four, it would be six games to zero. Now you are considering that possibility, right? When you say six here, you're saying that six were won and the other four were lost. And so you could say that uh, Jelena win, Jelena, 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 and then you could say Martina wins the last four. This is included in that probability. However, after these six games, those would not exist. And so that's a problem with what we have. So that's why there's the hint here that says, what is the score after nine games? Because after nine games, in order for them to get to six to four, then that means that Jelena is going to have to win the last game, right? So therefore, after nine games, it has to be five for Jelena and four for Martina, right? It has to be that situation. You can't do anything else. It can't be six to three, because if it was six to three, they'd be done. They wouldn't play the last game. They would only have nine games. And so after nine games, the score has to be five to Jelena and four to Martina so that Jelena can win that last game and end the set. Okay? So that means that we're now going to have to consider first the binome PDF of nine games. She has a one-third probability of winning. We need to get her to win five. Now, this is okay. The problem that we had before is not going to occur. Those five wins can happen in whatever order that needs to happen. She can win the first five and then lose the next four. She could win one and then lose four and then win the other four. So, I mean, any order is fine as long as they get to this point. Okay, that's what the binomial PDF will do. It will tell you, okay, no matter what order they occur in, we're going to win five games for Jelena. And so let's go ahead and do that first. And so then we'll go into the binomial PDF. And so we'll go second vars, which goes to the distribution. Alpha A, remember, is the binomial PDF. If you don't remember that, just arrow down. I'm not going to do it on this calculator because it takes forever. And so I'm just going to go on. I'm going to say, OK, there are nine games. She has a one-third possibility. Please use one-third. Don't use 0.3 or 0.333 or any cruddy things like that because the probability will be off. So then we're going to do uh, one-third possibility of winning and that she wins five of them in whatever order that it may be. And so you get 0 0.102. And I'm going to put 0 0.1024. 
And you may say, but IV only needs three numbers. Yes, it does only need three numbers, but I'm going to keep a couple of decimals as I'm working. And in fact, when I go back to my calculator, you'll notice that I keep all of them. But it's helpful to keep that last digit until we get to the end. Otherwise, you're going to round here, and you're going to round again, and you're going to round again. And every time you round, it's going to get off by a little bit. And a lot of little bits can add up to a lot of it. So here we go. This is the probability of it being 5 to 4. Now we consider the last game. The last game is the 10th game. The 10th game, she now has a probability of 1, 3. You could do it from here if you wanted. You already have a 0. 0.1024 probability of it being 5 to 4. <coughs> now you've got Martina and Jelena. Jelena wins 1 out of 3. Martina wins 2 out of 3. And so to get Jelena that last win, it would be 0. 0.1024 times 1 third. And so I'm going to take that number that I had before and I'm going to multiply it by 1 over 3. And uh, obviously I don't need that, so when I push enter, it will actually give me an answer, which is 0 0.0341. So the final probability is 0 0.0341. And there you go. That is the answer to the probability that Jelena will win a set of tennis exactly six games to four. All right, there you go. See you in class.